farm was purchased in 1925 by my grandfather, so I'm the third generation of Morals, and our children are the fourth generation of Morals to be owners and operators of Morrill Farm Dairy. Through 4-H, I met my husband's sisters, and I grew up with them, and we were always good friends, and they fixed me up on a date with Rob about 35 years ago, and it wasn't long after that that we got married. Mom and Dad got involved and continued, and now myself and my brothers are involved and still continuing. I guess I never really think about it generation after generation. It's what you learned to do when you were little. You got up in the morning and went to work. Whether you liked it or not, it was going to happen. So it's just part of life to all of us. We all kind of have our own little niches. I do a lot of the equipment maintenance, field work. Doing everything from delivering calves, you know, doing medical treatment on the animals, milking cows. We have a fair amount of red and white Holsteins on this farm, which is kind of a, not, it, it's a niche within the Holstein breed of, of dairy cattle. We do a lot of reproductive uh, embryo work. The calves are all of my, they are all my babies. <laughs> These calves are the future of the farm. What they start out here is as a newborn and in two years they're going to be up in the cow barn and we're going to be milking them. So the better they off they are when they're born, the best start possible, the best cows we get in return. All the cows do calve at this facility. So we're calving anywhere from 35 to 55 cows a month. There's some days you get here at 3 in the morning and you might not leave until 10 o'clock at night. It all depends on what's going on and what needs to be done. And you start by moving the first group of cows into the holding area for the milking parlor and you know about five o'clock, you know whoever's on for calf and heifer chores that morning, they, they start in feeding all the calves and when you think about treating your cows, you, you think about treating your ch children or you're treating yourself. Every animal before her milk ever goes into the bulk tank. We run a snap test on it. You see a cow with dual leg bands on her, you know that her milk does not go into the bulk tank. If you don't take care of them, they're never gonna take care of you. That's always been the motto that Dad's told us. Most all milk in New England is local milk. My whole lifetime, the milk from this farm has gone to that plant in Concord, and I've seen the change. Remembering when I was very young with my grandfather going with him taking canned milk to that particular plant location. And still today, 50 years plus later, uh, our milk, the milk from this farm still going to that plant. My wife works in a grocery store and she sees people that come in there all the time and they just take it for granted. It's right there on the shelf to buy it. They don't really remember where it's come from. We've lost that touch with the local farms and how um, long and hard it's taken families to come together and raise their cows to make sure that they have healthy food to eat for their families and grow. And we've really lost that touch with the local dairy farms and it's right here in New Hampshire. And I'm proud of that. That's why we as dairy farmers need to tell our stories. People have the idea that if they live in New England that there's milk coming in here from California because they've seen a California milk ad. Milk is a very perishable product. From the time it leaves the farm until the time it's processed is less than 24 hours. You know, we're working, I mean, myself, my family, 12 to 15 hours a day to do what we need to do just to keep going and stay in business and our business is making the food for people. You know, sometimes the best thing that I do at the end of the day is that I make sure that everybody's got clean clothes and fresh towels in the bathroom and there's a hot meal on the table. And they just, you know, when they all sit down to eat and everybody's nice and clean and they have a full belly and everybody's happy, I just feel good. We've grown here at home, has gotten bigger over the years and now we've expanded to another farm and grown the whole family business. Currently with the two locations that we have, we're milking 400 cows, just under 800 animals total. We're farming just 1,000 and 1,100 acres of ground, approximately 500 acres of corn, and the balance of that land is either in 
hay grass is and there's about 70 acres of clear seeding alfalfas. You know, the, the better we take care of the land, uh, the better it's gonna take care of us. You know, the same is with our cattle. I love the farm. I love being here. This is where my heart is. Sherry and I have been very blessed. We've had four children. They wanted to be dairy farmers. You've got to look to your youth. You've got to encourage youth to get involved uh, because they're the future. I get up and do it every day because it's what I enjoy doing. If, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, don't bother getting out of bed. Oh, I enjoy being here, that's for sure. And it's always been interesting to listen to the stories, how everything's developed over time. And I know the work that's been put into it generations before me. I, I know what I'm doing. My grandfather's still sitting in the house looking down at what we're doing every day, so you know, I'm trying to do things to keep him pleased with what he's seeing and feel as though what he started is continuing the right way. I like what I do and that's why I keep doing it.